You get your information from God, and that becomes the basis for your faith. Then you act on what you know. Faith to Live By is coming up next on Arkansas Alive. Hello, everybody. I'm Happy Caldwell, and I'm so happy to be here today. I want to welcome you to Arkansas Alive. We're glad you joined us for today's edition. All week long, we're teaching on faith to live by. Romans chapter 1, 16 and 17 says, The just shall live by faith. Faith is not a man, a message, a house, a suit of clothes, a car. Faith is a lifestyle. It's the way we live every day. And we're finding out that the definition of faith, what faith means, is faith is a noun. Hebrews 11.1, 1. faith is the substance of what you're hoping for, the evidence of what you haven't seen yet. So faith is substance and faith is evidence. Faith is something. Faith is the information that you receive from God that you're willing to act on. Faith is a noun. Believing is a verb. Faith is the information that you've received from God. Believing is what you are doing with the information that you have. Your faith is what you know. Your believing is what you do. Now, let's read Hebrews 11 1 again. Faith is the substance. We, we read it this way. Faith is the information that you've received from God that you're willing to act on. Faith is the substance, the information, the knowledge of things hoped for. Hope has its place, but hope is future. Faith is now. And the evidence of things not seen yet. You haven't seen the manifestation of it. That might be where some of you are today. You haven't seen the manifestation of what you're believing for. But make sure that your believing is based on the information you receive from God. You receive the information from God that by His stripes, by Jesus' stripes, you were healed. That's the information that you receive and that's what you act upon. That's what you release your faith for. Okay, now let's go over to James chapter four, uh, uh, James chapter two, excuse me. And uh, I told you we'd go here today, James chapter two. Let's look at verse fourteen, seventeen, and eighteen. James two fourteen. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and hath not works? Can faith save him? Faith not acted on, the Bible says is dead faith. It won't produce anything. It's non-productive. The Bible says that um, even the demons in hell believe, but they don't act on their belief, their faith. They don't have faith in Jesus Christ. They just believe that He existed. That's what it's referring to. Faith Demons in hell believe Jesus existed, but they don't accept Him as their Lord and Savior. They are eternally damned. So faith all alone, without acting on it, is not going to produce anything. If you're going to live by faith, you have to understand what faith is. It's a noun. It means the information, the knowledge that you've received from God that you're willing to act on. But that's only half of the equation. Believing is a verb. You have to believe means you have to act on what you know. Now, the problem is, in most cases, people don't know the right thing. The information that they have on God is wrong. It's incomplete. It's, it's opposite. It's incorrect. So you've got to fix that first. What do you know from God? What's the information that you've received from God, from His Word, from teachers on VTN, whatever. I, I hear teachers all the time on VTN. I know, I know it's, it's frustrating to me sometimes, but they're, they don't have the correct information. They're teaching the wrong thing. And I cringe because, I, you know, I, I feel responsible. We, we have contracts and we love these ministries and they're ministering to 
millions of people, but some of their information is wrong. You know, the Bible says every, no, nobody has all the truth. <laughs> not me, not anybody. But what I know, I know, and I know the scriptures, and, and I know it's correct, and I hear people say things that I, I just cringe because I thought, oh, man, that just... You know, there are people, you might be one of them, that believe that it's not always God's will to heal. And there are some ministries that will substantiate that. They believe that. They teach that. Um, there are some ministries that believe that experience is the best teacher. That's, that's not in the Bible, but that's substantiated by experiences. People tend to believe what they've experienced more than what the Bible says. And so they teach other people experience is the best teacher. And there are ministers, ministries that teach uh, God allows the devil to beat up on you. That's not in the Bible either, but they believe that because of their experience. And a lot of times we're teaching too much experience as doctrine instead of the doctrine of Christ. And, and you won't find any of those things in the Bible, but people really believe that and they teach it. And I just cringe when I hear it. I'm not fault finding or criticizing or judging. I just, I know what I know. And, and I know that people can't be healed, delivered, prospered, blessed, fixed when they don't have the right knowledge. When they have incomplete or incorrect knowledge, it's hard uh, for them to release their faith. And then they get frustrated. They say, well, why isn't my faith working? Because what you have based your faith on, the information that you've received is not from God. It's from a doctrine. It's from an experience. It's from somebody that doesn't know. And, and this is not a criti criticism. It's just an observation of fact. And therefore your faith won't work because it's not based on the word of God. It's not correct. God in his mercy has given us the benefit of the doubt. I mean, you know, the, the, the uh, thief on the cross, he never went to church. He never got water baptized, but he acknowledged that Jesus was the Christ and said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I mean, that's all he said. Well, that was enough. Jesus said, I tell you today, you'll be with me in paradise. Praise God for his mercy and his grace. And he overlooks our um, wrong thoughts and information sometimes. He's merciful. He's not, he's not a hard taskmaster. He's not a legalist. Thank God he gives us <laughs> room for error. But I'm talking about when you fix your faith, you're believing on something that's wrong for whatever reason, you've been taught wrong or you want to believe wrong or you've had an experience, your faith is not going to work. Faith alone won't work without corresponding action. You can lay in the bed and believe all day long that it's God's will for you to be healed and never get up and your faith is not going to produce anything. You have to act on it. Now, let's go to the next verse. Let's go to James. Uh, uh, we're in chapter 2. Let's go to verse 17. Faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. It must have corresponding action. Yet a man may say, you have faith, I have works. Show me your faith without your works. I'll show you my faith by my works. You say you have faith? Let me see it. How am I going to see faith? By your works. By what you've done based on what you know. How am I going to know there's faith? I'm going to know there's faith by looking at what faith has produced. What has faith produced? You know, I, I have had experience over the years, after 45 years of ministry, I've had experience where people, <laughs> young ministers mostly, zealous and, you know, um, here, here's, here's what we believe and blah, blah, blah. But they haven't produced anything. I remember years ago, uh, when we had uh, uh, Agape School World Evangelism and we were training missionaries and we had all kinds of courses that were taught and I taught some of them, other staff members taught some of them. And um, as a result of it, we've sent people all over the world and blah, blah, blah. However, they were going to, 
they were going to ask uh, a young man to teach faith in, in the Bible school that had never done anything with his faith. I mean, he had come to the church and he was growing and he was um, ministering in his particular calling and anointing, but faith and works, I mean, I, I asked him, I said, why did, you, why did you choose him to teach this class? I said, he hasn't taught he hasn't done anything with his faith. I mean, there's no evidence of faith in his life. So I told him, I said, I'll teach the class. Well, that brother today, although he's ministered joy and peace to a lot of people over the years, uh, I don't even know if he's still in the ministry today. Uh, he went back to his old denomination that he came out of, uh, I don't know whether well, he still believes the same thing I anymore. I, I, just, I just think it's unwise to put people in positions of authority to teach faith to somebody that have never done anything with their faith. I mean, people want proof. They want evidence. <laughs> well, faith being a noun, information that you receive from God that you're willing to act upon, faith is the substance of what you're hoping for, the evidence of what you've not seen yet. But when you see it, when it's manifested, when it's there, you don't have to have faith for it anymore. Why would you have faith for something that you can see? So we need to understand this. You have believed there's going to be corresponding action. You have not believed without acting on your faith. So show me your faith and I'll show you my works. I'll show you the end result. I'll show you what faith in God, faith in His Word has produced. Are you with me? Okay. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. Now, here, here we're going to look at three Examples out of the Hero Hall of Fame of Faith, the great cloud of witnesses, those in the Old Testament that demonstrated what faith was about. But, but remember, they believed God and it was imputed unto them. Abraham believed God. It was imputed, counted, reckoned to him for righteousness. We've been given the measure of faith and the spirit of faith. Yet with the measure and the spirit of faith, you know, I hear people all the time say, we haven't done near what these Old Testament saints, oh, yes, we have. You're, you're not looking in the right place. Everything that you read in Hebrews 11, the Hero Hall of Fame of Faith, we have seen today throughout the ages. We have seen believers, Christian believers, do the same thing. So don't, you know, don't get locked in to say, well, we haven't seen near the things they saw in the old days. Yes, we have. Follow me and I want to show you the, the, the key, the principle here. Okay, Hebrews 11 and verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, reverence, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world, became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Everything in the Old Testament points to the new. Everything in the Old Testament points to Jesus. You need both. The New Testament sets on the Old Testament. You can't throw it out. You, I, 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 have, I haven't heard ministers say this, but I've had people tell me that they've heard ministers say, we don't need the Old Testament anymore. It's no good. Throw it out. It's out. Forget it. That's not true. Everything in the old supports the new. Everything in the old points to the new, points to the new, to, points to Jesus. So you 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 have to have both. You and you need to know both. But listen to to what Noah did. Now let's break this down in light of what we're teaching. Faith to live by. Faith is a noun. It's the information that you receive from God for you to act upon. Was Noah warned in advance 
Was he told in advance what God wanted him to do? Yes. Uh, uh, let, let me get ahead of myself here so you'll know um, where we're going. Noah was warned. Abraham was called. Moses' parents saw. Now we'll come back to this if we don't run out of time this week. Noah was warned. Abraham was called. Moses' parents saw. Warned, called, saw. All right, now let's go back to Hebrews 11, 7. By faith, Noah being warned. Was Noah informed in advance of what God was going to do? Yes. Did Noah receive instruction from God? Yes. Did Noah act on the information that he received from God? Yes. By his acting on God's word, the Bible says he became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. See, there was, there was a righteousness in the Old Testament that was reckoned, imputed, counted on by keeping the law. But in the New Testament, the Bible says the righteousness which is of faith comes by believing and confessing, Romans 10. So we as Christian believers, we are still held to the same standards. It's just that the, the mechanics, the understanding and the application of faith is based on what Jesus did on the cross. It's based on his fulfillment in, in God's assignment to him. We are Abraham's seed through Christ. We have the same rights and privileges to, to walk in and experience and receive the blessings of the Abrahamic covenant because of Christ. Through Christ, we are Abraham's seed. So we are to believe with the heart, confess with the mouth, and we've been given the measure of faith and the spirit of faith. Now, let's, let's break this down again. By faith, Noah warned of God. So was Noah warned in advance? Yes. Did Noah receive instruction from God? Yes. Did Noah act on the information that he received from God? Yes. By acting on the information that he received from God, he became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. All right, let's go to Hebrews eleven eight. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, underline called. In the previous verse, verse 7, underline warned. By faith, Noah was warned. By faith, Abraham was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance. He obeyed. He went out not knowing where he went. That's faith personified. That's why Abraham became the father of our faith. Now, question. Did Abraham receive information from God? He sure did. <laughs> what is faith? It's the information that you've received from God to act on. Did Abraham receive information from God? Yes, he did. Did Abraham know what he was to do? Yes, he did. This information that Abraham received from God became his faith. By faith. Abraham. By the information that Abraham received from God. By faith, by his knowledge. Then the next step was his obedience on the information that he received from God became his believing. His obedience on, based on the information he received from God became his action, became his believing. Believing is a verb. Faith is a noun. Believing is acting on the information that you receive from God. 
So if you're sick right now and you get the information from God that by the stripes of Jesus you were healed, your next step is believing the information and acting. If you're laying in bed and you believe that Jesus' stripes, that He bore your sickness, carried your diseases, and by His stripes you are healed, then get up. That's how faith works. I remember years ago, I had just been saved. I don't know, I wasn't maybe a month or two old in the Lord, maybe more than that. But I, I remember this, I was still in my job as a, as a liquor salesman for a wholesale liquor company. You, some of you watched for a long time, you know my testimony. I was a liquor salesman for a wholesale liquor company right here in Pulaski County. And I called on all the bars, package stores, hotels, lounges, sold them their booze. I go to Nashville, February 11, 1972. I get, I get saved. I come home. First thing I want to do is get out of the liquor business. I'm born again now. I, I, don't, I don't believe in what I'm doing. don't like what I'm doing. I, I got delivered from a product, and now I'm going to be delivered from my job, and I'm wanting out of this. And the Lord said, you don't know anything. You've got a family to take care of, so you stay in your job until I tell you otherwise. While you're there, you can witness to all your customers. Okay, that's what I did. I didn't know much. I just said, I know I've got, I, I, I've got a testimony. I was lost and now I'm found. <laughs> uh, I got saved. What does that mean? I didn't really know, but I told them what happened to me. They saw the difference, the difference between daylight and dark. I mean, I was a new creature in Christ and everybody that knew me could tell it. And one morning, I mean, I was getting up to go to work. I'll never forget it. I could see it today. Where we lived, I had only been saved a few months. I was, the alarm went off. <clears throat> I got ready to get up and get dressed. And all of a sudden, all the symptoms of the flu that I had ever heard about, and I've never been a sickly person, sickly child. I've always been basically healthy. And all of a sudden, all the symptoms of the flu came on me. I mean, headache, pain, fever, aches and pains. I thought, oh, no. And the first thoughts that came through my mind. Now, I'm only a few months old in the Lord. The first thoughts that came in my mind was, you know, I can lay here. I'll, I'll be here two or three days uh, getting through this. And Jenny will bring me. Uh, orange juice and take care of me and so forth. <laughs> and that was my first thought. And the Holy Spirit spoke up on the inside of me and said, hold it. You're getting ready to make a decision. Boy, he was so right on target. And I was. I was getting ready to make a decision based on experience and what I thought, the unrenewed mind. I was getting ready to make a decision to call her in there and say, honey, I'm sick. I would call them at the office and tell them I can't come to work today and uh, get me some orange juice and, and I'm just going to lay here in bed and suffer. That was, that was what my mind was programmed to do and to think. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit said, hold it. You're getting ready to make a decision. And he said, now there's your closet right in front of you. He said, if you'll go to the closet, well, first of all, he said, if you believe me and my word for your healing, get up, there's your closet, get your clothes, go in the bathroom, shave, shower, dress, go in the kitchen, eat breakfast, and go to work. He said, you will be well before noon or before the day is over. And I'm laying there thinking, wow. Do I dare do this? <laughs> may some of you be thinking that right now. Do I dare do this? Well, I had the information from God. I had the word, the promise of God. I had his word. I mean, he spoke to me in my spirit. I knew this, this was God. He told me what to do. Now it's up to me to do it. And, you, you know, for a split second, you're, you're thinking, oh, man, I don't want to get up. I just want to lay here and roll over and go back to sleep. I'm hurting. And in, in your natural mind, you're thinking, oh, this is going to take effort. Yeah, it is, because every inch of your skin hurts. Even the sheets touching your body is. 
well, what do I do? You know, you want to be healed? Or you want to go lay in bed for three days and drink orange juice and take aspirin? What do you want to do? I wanted to be healed. I wanted to obey God. So with everything in me and the natural, I just gritted my teeth and I threw back the covers. I said, I'm going to act on that, God. I'm going to take you up on your word. Threw back the covers, got up, went to the closet, got my clothes, went to the bathroom, shaved, showered, went and ate breakfast. And before noon, all those symptoms were gone. What did I do? Faith is the information that you've received from God that you're willing to act on. Faith is the substance. What, what did Noah do? He took the information that he received from God and acted on it. What did uh, Abraham do? He took the information that he received from God. That became his faith. His obedience on the information he received became his believing. His believing was acting on the information that he had received from God. Now, there's, there's another example. There's a whole bunch of examples, but we're looking at three. Noah, Abraham, Moses' parents. Let's look at Hebrews eleven twenty three. 23. Hebrews eleven twenty three. 23. And I know we're running out of time, so we'll pick this up tomorrow. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. Noah was warned, <clears throat> uh, according to the Bible, a Abraham, um, Abraham was called, Noah was warned, Abraham was called, and Moses' parents saw. Here's three examples of the way faith came. What did Moses' parents see? Tune in to Mars, Arkansas Live, and we're going to tell to to you, we're going to tell you, we're going to tell you, show you what they saw. That's what their faith was based on. VTN's on Facebook. Find us at VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. This episode, episode is available to watch online. Log on to vtntv.com. Click on Watch On Demand. VTN is available to watch 24-7 via live stream. Uh, just log on to vtntv.com and click on Live Stream. People are watching all over the world. Thank you, partners, for making that possible. Uh, as you join me tomorrow, remember this. Jesus is Lord over Arkansas. And wherever people are watching, amen. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221. Or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com.